Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. So now we're on step four, where this router is receiving the bits that were sent from this router. And they're being received on this port. So that port's getting the bits. The router's going to reassemble the frame and see, hey, the destination MAC address is 00444444444. That's my MAC address. So this frame is destined for me. So now it's going to strip off the Layer 2 header. It's going to start the decapsulation process. Let's go ahead and strip it off. That's going to leave the packet. And it's going to take a look at the packet and say, hey, what's the destination IP address? It's 192.168.8.200. Do I know where that network is? And in fact, this router does. It's going to look at its routing table, and it's going to see that that network is actually directly connected to this router out this port. So the final destination for this packet is on the same network as this port. So therefore, the router knows that, okay, I need to send this packet to 192.168.8.200. Do I know the MAC address for 192.168.8.200? It's going to look in its ARP cache. If it does know it, then we're in good shape, and we can reframe it and send it off to computer B. If it doesn't, it's actually going to do an ARP request. So it's going to send that ARP request out, say, hey, what's the, IP, or what's the MAC address for 192.168.8.200? ARP is a broadcast. Therefore, it's going to make it over to computer B. Computer B is going to say, hey, my IP address is 192.168.8.200. Here's my MAC address, 0066666. It's going to send, be sent back to the router interface, and then the router is going to know the MAC address of the destination for this packet. So let's reframe it. When we reframe it, we know the source MAC address now, because it's going out this port, is going to be 00555555. The destination MAC address is 00666666. So let's re-encapsulate this packet. And the packet is still IP version 4, so the ether field is going to stay the same. This frame is going to be turned into bits, passed down to layer 1, and sent over the wire. So the bits are now going over the wire. They're going to hit the switch. The switch is actually going to look at the frame, say, hey, what's the destination MAC address? Okay, I see it's 066666. Do I have that in my MAC address table? And let's say yes, I do. Now it's going to send it out this port on the switch. So it's going to forward that frame off. And the bits are now coming down. And now we're on step six where computer B is actually receiving the PDU. So computer B gets these bits, reassembles them into a frame, and sees, okay, hey, the destination MAC address is for me. So this frame is mine. It's going to strip the frame header off, which leaves the packet. It's going to look at the packet say, hey, the destination IP is 192.168.8.200. That's my IP address. So it's going to strip off our control header. Now it's going to look at our segment and see that, okay, the destination port is port 80, which is HTTP. And that tells it where to hand it off to on layer 5. So it's going to pass it now up to layer 5, and it's going to strip off the header here and pass it off to the correct port protocol on layer 5. And now it's just data. So it's been completely decapsulated, and this protocol data unit has reached its destination. And most likely it will be a web server, and then that web server will send information back to computer A. And the process will just repeat itself. So this was kind of a, a long example, but it's great to see the process from end to end. And it's very important to know for the test and in the real world how this exactly works. Because we'll, we'll need to know, hey, if computer A sends information over to computer B, what, let's say, what is the MAC address or the source MAC address on the frame that computer B receives? Well, in this example, we saw the source MAC address was 555555. 
one might think that the source MAC address would be computer A's MAC address, which is 11111, but we know that's not the case. We might also get asked, hey, what was the source IP address on the packet that computer B received? Well, the source IP address never changed. It was, in fact, 192.168.6.100. So those are some questions that we need to know the answers to.